I'm not big on doing reaction videos or super clickbaity lists with number seven being the most shocking kind of thing, but I read an article recently that had 15 reasons why Mass Effect Andromeda is the best Mass Effect to date. The article just rubbed me the wrong way and I felt like I needed to say something, so in this video, I will counter every claim the article made and maybe, just maybe, maybe I'll put a bow on top. Okay, so there, there will be a bow. <sighs> with glitter. Combat is the best thing about this game. Oddly enough, it's the last thing on the list. You know what else is good too though? Ice cream. Rich chocolate ice cream with sprinkles and bananas and all the goodies on top. But if you have it for breakfast, and then you have it for lunch, and then you have it for dinner, and then you have dessert, and you eat it every five fucking seconds, you get tired of it. <clears throat> I think I made my point. If you think driving around in a big open sandbox with nothing to do in it but pick up shit you see pop up on your map while fighting cookie cutter battles in places that are almost entirely random, then sure, explore away. You could also save yourself the time by climbing to a high peak and looking around. You know, since there's not a damn thing to see anyways. I just want to point out that the article says, See something interesting? Drive over and check it out. It might be a small cat camp to clean out, or it might be a resident with a task for you that unfolds into a larger mission. After you see a monolith for the first time, it's coincidentally the last time that you get excited to see one. Larger mission? What larger missions? A bigger fetch quest? Someone wants you to sneak, and by sneak I mean shoot everything the moment you walk in because that's all you can do. Anyway, sneak into a place and get something bigger than a small trinket, but it's also not really that important so you never actually see what it is, but <sighs> ah, I'm getting off the point here. You get what I'm saying. The story is a patchwork of small things that hopefully, note the keyword here, hopefully, make you want to keep playing and find out what happens next. I have to find homes for my people? Is that what I'm supposed to be doing? I don't even give a tiny shit about these people. They're lifeless and bland as hell. The Ket, they're forgettable and boring, and as for the mysterious vaults, they're the same annoying puzzles and sequences. What's mysterious about them? Because the writing says they are? The writer's story arc is garbage. I never once felt like I was new to being a Pathfinder, yet the story forces it down my throat anyways. Oh, it's been a few minutes. Better remind them that they're new to this, eh? The article claims that the player can relate because the journey is paralleled with writers, but I've never felt more distant. That's equivalent to me handing a cricket to a guy and saying, here, you guys have a lot in common because it lives in fear all its life and so do you. Nothing matters and we're all gonna die. Have a nice day. While that is true because I said so, do you think that the guy gives an honest fuck about that cricket? Let's take a look at all the previous characters, gender swap them, and make them different from their cookie cutter NPC brethren. It's an entirely new galaxy, people. You find only one new race? Ugh. I mean, yeah, the cat, but I mean, look, we we knew the moment we saw them that they were in Garn. That was not even a twist. Come on. While it seems like a good idea, it's executed very strangely. I still have to stop everything I'm doing to change profiles. Take a page from Devil May Cry. Put them on the D-pad. I've never used the ally commands except to move someone out of the way, and I can still clear a room with no problems whatsoever. Building weapons is confusing. The UI sucks, inventory management is horrible. I feel no real changes in augmenting weapons and armor. I see no difference. Oh, oh wait, no, they change blue and red sometimes. Look guys, if you wanna make 5% bonuses and stuff work, no one has a concept of what 5% is in a game where you never see how much damage you do. Make my shots flashier or feel like there's more kick. Come on. I know it has increased damage, but taking two shots, one shot off, that's not enough to justify an entire weapons building gimmick. Maybe you'll inject a little humor into the situation, or you might even show incredulity at someone else's ridiculous ideas. It's up to you, and while it doesn't always affect your standing with that character, it adds more realism to the game and gives you much more personal investment into what kind of person your writer becomes. <laughs> Assuming I've made a personal investment in the blank character that is writer, or the ragtag band of misfits that's me crew, ah, uh, you shouldn't have. My wife and I played this game simultaneously, and I purposefully chose the opposite responses. The outcome, with the exception of maybe one or two instances, which had zero impact on anything other than the immediate scene to follow. It was exactly the same, down to the word. Her female writer and my male writer didn't stray at all. Look, Mass Effect 3 may not have had them, but this isn't a new idea and it's executed exactly the same way that it was in Mass Effect 2. Why is it on this list again? Okay, so maybe there's like one choice that might have a consequence or something, but um, just Go back to point eight if you still haven't gotten the message. 
Fetch quests and cataloging the game! Every world is essentially the same and there's nothing to explore! Volume of content. Yay! Basically, everything that slowed the games down to a crawl in the past has been eliminated or condensed. I guess this guy enjoyed the slowest fucking travel system I have ever seen. Even with the update, it's still so damn slow. I can't imagine what fast must be like for him. Texturing and wide shots are pretty good. Everything else? Meh. Faces, they're, they're getting better, but every human still looks like an animatronic. Look, this shouldn't even be here. This is heavily based on my own personal opinion, I know, but Mass Effect is a single-player game. It's a story game. Why developers put what is essentially just mindless slaughter disguised as something else in these kinds of games is beyond me. Its design on the outside is cool, but hey, you know what? It's already a cramped enough space. You can't really run around too much. You're trying to go in one direction, and uh, you want to talk to some people. You want to go to your room, maybe? Maybe you want to go to the, the other places around the ship? Well, you're going to have to stop everything you're doing and go down this ladder. Go down the ladder. Climb up the ladder. There's no escalator. There's no elevator. There's no teleporty thingy. It's the year three billion and five, and we can't, we can't figure out a way around fucking ladders, guys. Forward momentum. I can't run in here as it is, hardly. And the fucking, oh my, f fuck ladders. Fuck ladders! Hate ladders! Jokes aside, it's so easy to counter this with legitimate points. I'm the guy that didn't mind Skyward Sword that much. Keep that in mind. I just did not feel anything from this. It's a husk trying to survive off of what its predecessor has built, and that's it. There's no urgency to save people, no time limits to find the arts. Your colonies are as boring as the sun is hot. Combat is thrown in all the time for no reason, and it's the end all to every situation just because it was the game's strength, and they knew that. To the question at hand, why? Why save? all of this. Look at the last sentence of the article and all will be revealed. Are we crazy to think that Andromeda is the best Mass Effect yet? Let us know in the comments. Pointing out the trend and saying, are we crazy for saying this? <laughs> wow, that's so edgy. Going against the grain. <laughs> what were we thinking? Let us know in the comments section, please. We need traffic. Guys, it's just so painful. According to Alexa in SiteWorthTraffic.com, Screen Rant has been losing traffic ever since the start of the year. It dropped to its lowest point around March and reached its highest point even compared to last year in, oh, five Fuck, look at that, May. I'm not saying this one article did it, but it sure as shit helped. Saying the opposite of what millions of people are saying on a major site by accident at their lowest point? Look at the comments here. Every single one of these has one or two comments, but this one had 100. Since April, it looks like they've been pushing hard to raise their traffic ranking. I gave this guy a lot of shit for writing this, but he probably doesn't agree with the damn word he said either. My last episode, I tried to make a point with Skyward Sword saying, think for yourself, essentially. Articles and websites like these are exactly why I say that. Find an objective news source, study them, make it yours. This goes beyond games, folks. This is a life lesson. In any case, thank you for joining me on this episode of Little Bits. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to me down here and follow me on the Twitter machine for regular interactions and bonus material, like art and things. Till next time.